I was just walking in the woods near my small town when I saw a cabin hidden among the trees. It looked old and abandoned, but I was curious to see what was inside. Maybe I could find some interesting stuff or clues about who lived there. I approached the cabin slowly, feeling a bit nervous. The door was slightly ajar, so I pushed it open and stepped inside. It was dark and dusty, and there was a musty smell in the air. I saw some furniture covered with sheets, a fireplace, and a staircase leading to the upper floor. I decided to explore the ground floor first. I walked around, looking for anything that might catch my eye. I found a bookshelf with some books, a cabinet with some dishes, and a closet with some clothes. Nothing too exciting. I was about to go upstairs when I heard a loud piercing scream from the cabin. It was scary as fuck, and it sounded like it came from the upper floor. I froze in fear, wondering what the hell was that. Was there someone else in the cabin? Was it a person or an animal? Was it in pain or in anger? I didn't want to find out. I turned around and ran out of the cabin as fast as I could. I didn't look back, I just kept running until I reached the edge of the woods. I was panting and sweating, and my heart was pounding in my chest. I still don't know who made that scream, and I guess I don't want to know. Maybe it was a prank, maybe it was a trap, maybe it was something worse. I don't care, I just want to forget about it. I never went back to the cabin, and I never told anyone about it. It was the scariest experience of my life, and I hope it never happens again. I always loved camping, especially in the wilderness. That's why I decided to spend a week at the Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, one of the best states in America for nature lovers. I booked a solo cabin at the Madison Campground, near the Firehole River. The campground was huge, with over 200 sites, but I chose a secluded one, away from the crowds and the noise. I wanted to enjoy the peace and quiet of the forest, and maybe spot some wildlife. The cabin was cozy and comfortable, with a bed, a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a bathroom. It had a large window that overlooked the river and the mountains. I felt like I was in paradise. I unpacked my stuff, made some coffee, and sat on the porch, admiring the view. I planned to go hiking the next day, and explore the park's attractions, such as the geysers, the hot springs, and the waterfalls. The first night was uneventful. I slept well, listening to the sounds of the night. The next morning, I woke up early, had a quick breakfast, and grabbed my backpack. I locked the cabin and headed to the trailhead, which was about a mile away. I was excited to see what the park had to offer. The hike was amazing. I saw some bison, elk, and deer grazing in the meadows. I marveled at the colorful pools and geysers, steaming and erupting. I took a lot of pictures and videos with my phone. I reached the old faithful geyser around noon and watched it spout a huge jet of water and steam into the air. It was a spectacular sight. I ate my lunch at a nearby picnic area and then continued my hike. I wanted to see the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, a deep gorge carved by the river with stunning waterfalls. It was about 15 miles from the geyser so I knew I had to hurry if I wanted to make it back to the cabin before dark. I increased my pace, following the signs and the map. The trail was mostly flat and easy, but it was also long and lonely. I didn't see any other hikers along the way. I felt a bit uneasy, but I shrugged it off. I was an experienced camper, and I had all the necessary gear and supplies. I also had a can of bear spray, just in case. I reached the canyon around 4 p.m. It was worth the effort. The view was breathtaking. The river was flowing fast and furious, creating a roaring sound. The walls of the canyon were yellow, red, and orange, contrasting with the green of the trees. The sun was shining on the water, creating a rainbow. And the waterfalls were magnificent, especially the lower falls, which plunged 308 feet into the abyss. I took some more pictures and videos, and then decided to head back. It was getting late, and I didn't want to be caught in the dark. I retraced my steps, hoping to reach the trailhead by 6 p.m. I walked as fast as I could, but I soon realized I had a problem. 
My phone was running low on battery. I had used it too much for taking pictures and videos, and I forgot to bring a power bank. I checked the map and saw that I still had about 10 miles to go. I cursed myself for being so careless. I decided to turn off my phone and save the remaining battery for emergencies. I hoped I wouldn't get lost or encounter any trouble. I was wrong. About halfway through the trail, I heard a loud growl behind me. I turned around and saw a large black bear standing on its hind legs about 50 feet away. It was staring at me with a menacing look. It was probably attracted by the smell of my food, or maybe it was just curious. Either way, it was not a good sign. I felt a surge of fear and remembered the advice I had read about dealing with bears. I slowly backed away, avoiding eye contact and speaking in a calm voice. I said something like, Hey bear, I'm not here to harm you. Just passing through, please leave me alone. I reached for my bear spray and hoped it would work. The bear didn't seem to care. It dropped to all fours and started to charge at me. I panicked and sprayed the canister aiming at its face. The spray hit the bear, but it only slowed it down. It was still coming at me, growling and snarling. I turned around and ran towards the river. I hoped to find a boat or a bridge or anything to cross the water. I knew bears could swim, but maybe the current would be too strong for it. I reached the river and saw a small canoe tied to a dock. I ran to it and untied the rope. I jumped in and grabbed the paddle. I pushed the canoe into the water and started to row as fast as I could. I looked back and saw the bear on the shore still following me. It jumped into the water and started to swim after me. I was terrified. I paddled harder, hoping to outrun it. I saw a bend in the river and a sign that said, Danger, rapids ahead. I didn't care. I was willing to take the risk. Anything was better than being mauled by a bear. I steered the canoe towards the rapids and prayed for a miracle. The rapids were rough and wild. The canoe was tossed and turned by the waves. I tried to keep my balance and avoid the rocks. I felt the water splashing on my face and the wind blowing in my ears. I heard the roar of the river and the growl of the bear. It was still behind me, swimming through the rapids. It was relentless. It wanted me dead. I saw a waterfall ahead. It was about twenty feet high and looked dangerous. I had no choice. I had to go over it. I braced myself and hoped for the best. I felt the canoe going over the edge and falling into the air. I screamed and closed my eyes. I don't know how long I was in the air. It felt like an eternity. I opened my eyes and saw the water below me. I hit the surface and went under. The water was cold and dark. I felt the pressure on my chest and the pain in my head. I tried to swim up, but I was disoriented. I was drowning. But somehow I made it to the shore and survived, and thankfully that bear also hadn't followed me. This was the scariest experience I ever had in the wild. I was camping out in a field with my friends, we blasted music till midnight and then went to sleep after drinking. It was a fun night, we laughed and joked and enjoyed the stars. I fell asleep in my sleeping bag, feeling warm and cozy. But at about 4 a.m., I woke up to footsteps outside our tent. I opened my eyes and listened carefully. The footsteps were slow and heavy, like someone was dragging their feet. I looked outside by unzipping the tent flap, but there was no one. I thought maybe I was just hearing things, so I went back to sleep. And as I was laying there trying to sleep, I heard footsteps again. This time they were louder and closer. I looked outside again, but there was nothing. I thought maybe it was the owner of the field or maybe someone else trying to prank us, so I zipped up the tent again. But then I heard footsteps again, but this time they were coming from two directions. I felt a chill run down my spine. Who was out there? I woke my friends up and we all looked outside, but there was nobody there. We grabbed our flashlights and scanned the field but we saw nothing. We were scared and confused. 
We decided to pack up and leave as soon as possible. We didn't want to stay there any longer. We quickly gathered our stuff and ran towards our car. But as we were getting into our car, we saw something that made our blood run cold. There were footprints on the hood of our car. They were large and muddy, like someone had climbed on top of our car while we were sleeping. We quickly got into our car and drove away from the field, feeling relieved. We never found out who or what was outside our tent that night. I always loved camping, especially in the summer. There was something about being in nature, away from the noise and stress of the city, that made me feel alive and free. That's why I decided to take a solo trip to Colorado, one of the best states for camping according to an article I had read online. I wanted to explore the Rocky Mountain National Park, which had over 400 square miles of stunning scenery and wildlife. I rented a car and drove from Denver to Estes Park, where I checked in at the Moraine Park campground. It was a large campground with 244 sites, but it was not too crowded or noisy. I found a nice spot near a creek with a view of the mountains. I set up my tent, unpacked my gear, and made a fire. I cooked some hot dogs and beans and enjoyed the sunset. I felt happy and relaxed. I decided to go to bed early since I planned to hike the next day. I crawled into my sleeping bag and listened to the sounds of the night. I heard crickets, owls, and the occasional rustle of leaves. I drifted off to sleep, dreaming of the adventure ahead. I woke up suddenly, feeling a cold sweat on my forehead. I checked my watch. It was 2.37 a.m. I wondered what had woken me up. I listened carefully, but heard nothing unusual. Maybe it was just a bad dream, I thought. I tried to go back to sleep, but I felt uneasy. I had a strange feeling that I was not alone. I decided to get up and check the perimeter of my campsite. I grabbed my flashlight and stepped out of my tent. I scanned the area with the beam of light, looking for any signs of trouble. Everything seemed normal. I saw my car, my fire pit, my cooler, and my backpack. I walked around the campsite, feeling more confident. Maybe I was just being paranoid, I thought. I was about to return to my tent when I heard a loud roar. It sounded like a mix of a lion and a bear, and it came from behind me. I turned around and saw a huge creature standing on its hind legs, about 20 feet away from me. It had dark fur, a long snout, and glowing red eyes. It looked like a werewolf, but bigger and more muscular. It bared its teeth and growled at me. I froze in fear, unable to move or scream. The creature took a step towards me, and I dropped my flashlight. It landed on the ground, pointing at the creature's feet. I saw that it had long claws and blood on its paws. I realized that it had killed someone, or something, before coming to me. I felt a surge of panic and tried to run. But it was faster than me. The creature chased me into the woods, roaring and snarling. I ran for about five minutes, dodging trees and rocks hoping to find a way out. I saw a light in the distance and felt a glimmer of hope. It was a park ranger station. I sprinted towards it, shouting for help. A ranger heard me and came out of the station. He saw me running towards him and the creature behind me. He grabbed his rifle and aimed at the beast. He fired a shot and hit it in the chest. And the creature stopped chasing me and ran away. I reached the station and collapsed on the porch. The ranger ran to me and checked my pulse. He was relieved to see that I was alive, but shocked by what he had seen. He radioed for backup and told them what had happened. He said he had never seen anything like that before. He said it looked like a bear, but bigger and more muscular. I thanked him for saving my life and told him everything. I told him how I had woken up in the middle of the night and found the creature near my campsite. I told him how it had attacked me and how I had escaped. He listened to me and nodded. He said he believed me. He said he had heard rumors of a strange animal in the park, but he had dismissed them as just some dumb rumors. I still don't know what that thing really was.
I always wanted to hike the Maroon Bells in Colorado, one of the most beautiful and scenic places in the country. I had read about the stunning views of the snow-capped peaks, the crystal-clear lakes, and the colorful wildflowers. I had also heard about the dangers of the trail, such as the unpredictable weather, the steep terrain, and the wildlife. But I was not deterred. I was an experienced hiker, and I wanted to challenge myself. I decided to go solo, since none of my friends were available or interested in joining me. I packed my backpack with the essentials, water, food, first aid kit, map, compass, flashlight, knife, and bear spray. I also brought a tent, a sleeping bag, and a stove, since I planned to camp overnight at Crater Lake, about six miles from the trailhead. I checked the weather forecast, which predicted clear skies and mild temperatures. I felt confident and excited as I drove to the parking lot, where I left my car and started my hike. The first part of the trail was easy and pleasant. I followed a well-marked path through a forest of aspen trees, which shimmered in the sunlight. I crossed a few streams and bridges, and enjoyed the sound of the water. I saw a few other hikers along the way, who greeted me with smiles and compliments. I felt happy and relaxed, and took some pictures with my phone. After about three miles, the trail became more difficult. I reached the Maroon Snowmass Wilderness Boundary, where a sign warned me of the hazards ahead. It read, The Maroon Bells are deadly. Many have died from exposure, falls, and rock slides. Do not attempt this hike unless you are prepared for emergencies. Stay on the trail. Do not camp above tree lean. Beware of lightning, bears, and mountain lions. Hike at your own risk. I shrugged off the warning, thinking that it was exaggerated and meant to scare off inexperienced hikers. I continued on the trail, which climbed steeply up the mountain. The scenery changed dramatically as I ascended. The trees became sparse and stunted, and the ground became rocky and barren. The air became thinner and colder, and the wind picked up. I started to sweat and pant, and felt my legs burn. I stopped frequently to catch my breath and drink some water. I looked at my map and saw that I was close to Crater Lake, where I planned to camp. I felt a surge of motivation and pushed myself to reach the lake before sunset. I finally arrived at Crater Lake and was rewarded with a spectacular view. The lake was a deep blue, reflecting the towering maroon bells, which glowed in the evening light. I felt a sense of awe and accomplishment and forgot about the hardships of the trail. I found a flat spot near the lake where I set up my tent and stove. I cooked some noodles and ate them with gusto. I felt warm and cozy in my sleeping bag and drifted off to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling a sudden chill. I checked my watch and saw that it was 2 a.m. I heard a loud noise outside my tent, like something heavy crashing through the bushes. I felt a surge of fear and grabbed my flashlight and knife. I wondered if it was a bear or a mountain lion and hoped that it would go away. I heard the noise again, closer this time. I heard a low growl, and felt something brush against my tent. I screamed and stabbed my knife through the fabric, hoping to scare off the animal. I heard a yelp of pain, and then silence. I waited for a few minutes, trembling and sweating. I wondered if the animal was dead or wounded, or if it had run away. I decided to peek outside my tent, to see what had happened. I unzipped my tent and shone my flashlight outside. I gasped and dropped my flashlight as I saw a horrifying sight. It was not a bear or a mountain lion, but a man. A man with long hair, a beard, and ragged clothes. A man with blood on his face, and a knife in his chest. A man who looked at me with a twisted smile and said, Hello, friend. I've been watching you. I felt a surge of panic and adrenaline and reached for my bear spray. I aimed it at the man's face, and pressed the trigger. A stream of pepper spray hit him in the eyes, nose, and mouth. He howled in agony, and stumbled back. I seized the opportunity, and grabbed my backpack and flashlight. I ran out of my tent, and sprinted towards the trail. I didn't look back, and hoped that he wouldn't follow me. I ran for what seemed like an eternity, until I reached the trailhead. I saw my car, and felt a wave of relief. I got in, 
and locked the doors. I started the engine and drove away as fast as I could. I still don't know who that man was and what he wanted from me. But I know one thing, I'll never hike solo again.